Hey everyone and welcome back to this two part how to guide. In the first part I've talked about the weapons and vehicles that you need and I broke down the finer details on how to become an MC president and what you'll need to start the business to run your underground empire. In this video I'll be explaining how to set up your CEO warehouse, how to become how to make both the biker and CEO businesses work together, and lastly I'll show you how to make a public private lobby on the PS4. Again, if any of the information I provide in both the first part and in this video was any useful, please drop a like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. With that out of the way, let's continue this guide. Now you might be asking yourself, how much money would I need to start up this part of the guide? Well, I'm not going to lie to you, you're going to need a lot of money. I'm going to say you need at least about mm, 8 $9 million, maybe 10 at best. So if you don't have that money saved up, continue using the bike, your selected biker business and use the VIP missions. Now you'll still need a million bucks in your savings account for the VIP stuff and keep in mind that the, C, that the, uh, v, the VIP status is only active for 4 hours and once it's done you have to wait 12 hours for it to restart. So for the, for the amount of money you'll need You'll need, like I said, you'll need at least a million dollars in your bank account at all times. Now, for the office, the cheapest office right now is this one. The Maze Bank West office. Right by the, the Del Piero apartments. It's like across the street from it. Right now, there's, an, there's a discount going on, from, going on from November 29th to December 7th when you're watching this video where all the CEO offices, doesn't matter which, are half off. So right now the Mays Bank West building is 500000 This is how much you'll be paying if you don't want any of this. Like the, pers the personnel you're going to be ch you're gonna be choosing, that's included. Your organized name, that's included, but the font, you can, th but changing the font will cost much. Uh, you can have the gun locker, you can have the safe. Or the accommodation if you don't buy the stuff now you don't have to worry about it you can buy it later when you have more money saved up but in case you're wondering how much it costs now uh, well no that doesn't like for like the with the gun locker the safe and the accommodation you'll be paying about 1 million 300 well in the in the uh, decor got to add that too if you want like the most expensive decor, one million seven hundred eighty thousand is what you'd be paying when you do all the upgrades. You don't if you don't want the upgrades, again you'll just be paying five hundred thousand for the for the office. But with the upgrades and without the discounts that you and without the discounts you'll get for the uh for the decor in the office, you'll be looking at around 3.5 million when it's all set and done with with you know with everything. So again, if you're running short on money, keep doing the biker businesses until you have the amount saved, and also again and also do the VIP missions. But if you have just the money to buy the office, and then you're short, you can now become a CEO and. CEOs are not restricted to the four hour time limit that the VIPs are restricted to. So when sh when you be once you become a CEO, you can do your VIP missions as long as you want, as many times as you want. So again, do the missions Headhunter and Sightseer over and over again. These will pay 25000 per 12 minutes. To buy your warehouses, go to your desk and access the Securo Serve Network. Just like with the biker stuff, you'll need to be in a public lobby to buy your warehouses. Here on the network, you can buy up to five different warehouses. The size of the warehouse will vary based on how much money you have. But if you want a loadout like mine, which is two large warehouses and one small warehouse, then the two cheapest large ones you can get is this one for 2.6 million and this one for 1.9 million. And as for the small one, you want the one I currently have, which is this one, which will range for $250,000. Once you have your warehouses, go to any one and inside will be a toolbox with schematics on them. 
Here is where you'll purchase the upgrades to the cell vehicles. The vehicles consist of the MTL Brigade, the Titan, the Cuban 800, and the Tugboat. There are three choices, one for land, air, and sea, and each choice has two choices. While the Brigade has the bulletproof tires and armor upgrade, the Titan and the Cuban 800 will have both the armor and missile jammer, and the tugboat will have a speed and armor upgrade. Now these upgrades will cost anywhere between two and a half to five million plus dollars. But the good thing is that once you buy them, they'll work for all the warehouses, so you don't have to buy the buy the upgrades multiple times. Now to stock up your warehouses, you'll need to once again access the SecuroServe network in your office. Once there, select one of your warehouses. On the buy screen, you'll have three options. The one crate option is $2,000. The two crate option is $8,000. And the three crate option is $18,000. The overall difficulty of these buy missions depend on which crate option you choose, but once you buy the selected crate option, Listen, just simply do the mission and bring the cargo to thing. the selected warehouse. Most of the missions are straightforward, going from the office to the drop-off point and from the drop-off point to the warehouse, but there are others that will involve killing a specific target or going out to sea or finding the vehicle using Trackify. But if you get a mission where the enemy has taken your cargo and are in the air, you want to do is call for your buzzard by going into the interactive menu, select secure serve CEO, then select CEO vehicles, and then you want to select your buzzard. If you have bought the buzzard, this option will be free to you forever. But if you didn't buy the buzzard, you'll need to pay the $25,000 rental fee. Pay it once and it'll be free for you while you're in that public lobby. Once you leave it, however, you'll need to pay the fee once again. Now these missions will be randomly generated. While doing these missions, you want to drive the Armored Karen Karuma. This car's bulletproof v windows will shield you from any enemy fire. That way you can clear the area before grabbing the special cargo. If you're being pursued by enemy AI and you're not in the Karuma, stop the vehicle, get out and with the special carbine or any assault rifle that you've got, take the enemies out. The game will throw enemies at you depending on which crate option you bought. If you bought the one crate option, you'll only get two cars. For the two crate option, you'll have four cars, and for the three crate option, you'll have six, uh, six cars. But if you have cops pursuing you, simply call Lester and select the Remove Wanted Level ability. Now, the total time to fill up your warehouses depends on which crate option you buy, your dedicated time, and the speed of you and your three associates. Keep in mind that once you do a successive buy mission on that warehouse, it'll ha have a four minute cooldown time limit before you, before you can do any other buy mission. Now the three crate option is the fastest of the three options, but it's also the least profitable. And while the one crate option is slowest of the three, it's the most profitable. However, if you want to maximize both time and profit, I strongly recommend you do the two crate option. While not as profitable as the one crate option and not as fast as the three crate option, the two crate option will be your best bet to fill up both warehouses. Now occasionally your office assistant will give you a ring telling you that you have an opportunity to buy a special item off of the SecuroServe network. These items will cost more than the original options but they'll also pay out more. There are six items in total. There's the antique watch, the large diamond, the ornamental egg, the yeti pelt, the golden minigun, and the film reel. This is where your small warehouse will come into play. Again, just like the standard cargo, go to your computer in the office and access the SecuroServe network. Once online, select the small warehouse. On the buy screen, you'll notice that the special item has taken over the one crate spot. The special items are ran randomly generated, so if you want to know how much each costs, the watch will cost $30,000, the large diamond is $27,000, the egg is $25,000, the golden minigun is $23,000, the yeti pelt is $21,000, and the film reel is $19,000. The difficulty on a special item buy mission is based on a three crate option. 
While difficult, they're not impossible to do. Again, use the armored Karuma to do the mission and bring the special item to the warehouse. If it's a, again, if it's an air or sea mission, use the t use the buzzard. What you want to do with the special items is sit on them until you get all six war six in the small warehouse and never fill the warehouse with regular cargo. The six items alone will pay off the small warehouse twice over with extra profit going to you. Now that you have your warehouse full of inventory, it's time to sell it. To perform a sell mission, you'll need to access the laptop in your full warehouse. Just like buying inventory, you'll have three options to sell your stock. The prices will depend on your current inventory and the warehouse itself. But for a full large warehouse, it'll net you $2.22 million. That's $2,220,000 per large warehouse. So if you have a warehouse loadout like mine, again, two large warehouses and a small one, you'll be making $4,440,000 each time you sell the two warehouses. And that's without the high demand bonus. The sell missions are randomly generated. They'll either take place on land with the Brigade, in the air with either the Titan or the Cuban 800, or at sea with the tugboat. Once you do the sell, you'll get the you'll get paid, and that's it. But if for some reason you fail the the sell mission, most of your unsold stock may or may not return to your warehouse. If this happens, simply do buy missions to restock what you lost and try the sell mission once more. These missions, for the most part, are easy to do solo, and you can do these well within a 30-minute time limit. Most players online will simply ignore you if you're doing either a buy or sell mission because the reward for screwing players up that are doing their missions isn't that great. They'll usually just get $2,000, some ammo, and RP. But do keep watch for that one tryhard or troll that will try to stop at nothing to screw you over. If for some reason you feel that the sell mission is going to fail, again, just like the biker businesses, Simply quit the game or find another lobby. By doing so, before the game auto saves, all your product will return to the warehouse and you can try the sell mission again when you get into another lobby. So now that you've gotten everything set up, you've got your biker businesses and your CEO warehouses ready, it's time to make them work together and this is how you do so. Now the method I'm about to tell you is based on my five biker businesses and my two large and one small CEO warehouse. So the results will vary on you. So, for number one, if you have all five biker businesses and they're all upgraded, what you wanna do is shut down all but one and let that one that you left online run at least three times. Once you've done the third sell on that warehouse, shut it down, resupply it, and move on to the next business and run the that one three times what you want to do you want to do this for each business so if you're wondering how much each business makes three times on the cross the map option it's 378,000 for the documents 756,000 for the weed 882,000 for the counterfeit money 1,071,000 for the meth and 1,260,000 for the cocaine you want to keep the cycle going at all times, so don't have all bus all your businesses shut down once you make your desired amount. Also, having all but one shut down will reduce the likelihood of you getting raided. And while you're also letting your businesses build up its product, you can switch over to your CEO stats and do the VIP missions to help you boost your money up. Now for step two. You want to accumulate you want to use what you've accumulated from the biker businesses to start filling up your warehouse. The amount you made off of your bis your biker stuff will compensate for the total amount you want you'll use to fill up the warehouses. Again, if you did a did the same warehouse loadout like I did, then you'll need at least nine hundred thousand dollars to fill up both large warehouses. One large warehouse alone will take four hundred and forty two thousand to fill up doing the two crate option. Now keep in mind though that once you do a buy mission on one large warehouse, that warehouse will have a cooldown timer. So what you want to do is alternate between the two wa large warehouses 
That way you don't have to mess with the cooldown timer and it keeps the flow going. Now for step three, you want to switch between a CEO and MC President stats. Rockstar has made it to where you cannot be both at the same time, which makes perfect sense since the MC President is getting taxed for running the businesses in upwards of $30,000. So while filling up your warehouses, you want to check on your current active MC business. The way I do it is once I reach 20% in both my warehouses, I retire from the CEO stats and without activating MC President stats, I go to the business that I left running to check on it. If the business needs to be resupplied, resupply it or if the business is full of product, do the sell mission. If you see your business is okay on supplies and it doesn't need to be resupplied at the time you check off on it, just leave the business, reactivate your CEO stats through the interactive menu and continue buying inventory for your warehouse. Your main goal here is to keep doing is to keep checking up on your businesses every increments of 20%. So if you checked up on it on a at 20% and it was okay or you had to do a sell or a buy or a resupply and you resupply it and you built letting it build up again, you want to check up on it on 40%, 60%, etc. Now, if you get the call for the special items, jump on them immediately. Whatever you do, whenever you get the call, you want to, like I said, you want to jump on them and store the small, the special items in your small warehouses. Do not sell the special items until you get all six. You can get at least three to four special items when you, on the first time you fill up your two large warehouses. Once you sell sell the two large warehouses and build them up again for the second fill up, you'll get the fifth item through half at least halfway. But if you don't, don't worry about it. Just keep filling them up until you get that special item for the for the small warehouse. And you'll get the final small the final special item about when you're almost done with the with the third fill up of the two large warehouses. Now step five. Once you have your two warehouses full, immediately sell them. You'll make four million four hundred forty thousand on the two large warehouses. So if you do a one fill up, sell, a second fill up, and sell, you'll make an eight million eight hundred eighty thousand dollars on those two strings. But every third string, you'll make five million one hundred sixty-five thousand with the two large warehouses plus the small warehouse once you sell it. Once you get that done, just rinse and repeat the process. So let's break this down. If you do the five biker businesses three times each, that's 4,347,000 plus the 4,440,000 every two standard warehouse sales plus the 5,165,000 every third warehouse sales with the special item sales that totals up to 18,392,000 but minus the 1,326,000 that it takes to fill up the two large warehouses under the two crate option and you're still making $17,066,000 that's an insane amount of money to make and if you want an even more insane figure if you can manage to pull this off for a week like doing everything a week you can make at least $887 million a year by following this method. Now keep in mind the figures I've just mentioned will vary based on what you can afford like your businesses, your warehouses, your crate options, etc. It'll vary depending on what you can afford. So please don't spam the comment section with negative remarks about not making the amounts I've just mentioned. It's going to take some time getting this method down to the down to the wire so just finite it perfect it and soon you'll be seeing the large sums of money that you see in my office and finally I'm going to show you how to make a private public lobby or at least tell you now the method I'm about to reveal will work on any PS4 model but for those who are on PC I know that there's a program that can help you lag into your own lobby so if any PC player out there who knows what the name I'm talk of the name of the program I'm talking about, 
please leave the name of it in the comment section down below. But as for the Xbox One players, the only way I know for sure is to mess with your router settings. Unless the method I'm about to tell you has some similarities in, this, in the system settings. So anyway, on PS4, what you want to do is go to your go to settings, go to network, set up internet connection, and use Wi-Fi. Now I don't know for sure if this works on on wired networks. If anybody who wants to try it, feel free to do so and let me know. Anyway, continuing on, you want to select custom, select Wi-Fi, then you want to then you want to put your IP address to automatic your DHCP to do not specify, your DNS settings to automatic, and then your MTU settings to manual. Here you want to change the number from 1500 to a low number. The lowest number the PS4 will be able to do is 550, so between 1499 and 550 is where you want to drop the number down to. And lastly you want to put the proxy server to do not use. By dropping the MTU number down to a low number, you're effectively limiting the amount of traffic your PS4 sends and receives. But by doing this, you will load into a public lobby by yourself 100% of the time, so you can do your CEO MC businesses in peace. Doing this is crucial to the, me the method I've mentioned in this guide. If you want to play with friends with this setup without them lagging, lagging out of, the, out of the session, make sure the number is set to a slightly higher number than normal but below the 1500 standard. And also make sure your friends are not using any online services like Spotify. This will make them lag out faster. Now there are two downsides to this. One is that it will take a bit longer to load into online. Sometimes you'll time out. If you time out, don't worry about it, just try again and you'll get into your own lobby by yourself. But for the most part, you'll be able to get in. And in the second downside is that if you want to play with friends that are in another session, while you have your network set up to the way I just said, it'll normally put you into another lobby by yourself. But if you want to play with your friends that are in another session, simply just put the net put the network set settings back to easy and the PS4 will go back to normal and take care of everything else. Right, that's it for this how-to guide. Thank you so much for watching this through the end and if this video guide was in any way helpful to you, please show your support by hitting that like button and subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos like this. Anyways, thanks for watching, take care, and I'll see you all in the next one.